Hey guys, it's Jackie from Sacred Journeys. How's it going? Hey, listen, I'm got something rolling around in my mind. Have you ever been uh, accused of being too nice? Do people say, oh gosh, you're so nice, or she's so nice, or that being nice? Have you ever noticed the energy of that? So go ahead and breathe into the energy of being nice. If you've ever been nice all the time, I have a question. Are you authentically being nice? Or is it a way for you to feel accepted, to fit in, to, to not be a threat to someone? Because being nice is actually a coping skill, a coping mechanism for people who are raised up in violent kind of uh, not even outright violent, but like unsafe, emotionally unsafe situations where that is a coping skill that you develop to be safe in your environment. You can be nice, you can be helpful, you can always be the one to care for other people or accommodating, things like that. That is the personality or a, a, a facade, if you will, of being nice. And it's a way of really covering up your true authentic self so you won't be yelled at, abused, um, shunned, anything like that. If you don't feel like you're fitting in any other way, you can always be the nice girl, nice boy. Uh, be the good boy, be the good girl. And it's, it's, a, it's a way of fitting into your environment so you're safe. But it may not actually be truly who you are. So I'm just curious if this is something that resonates with you. Is there a part of you that is really hiding behind being nice? And you can tell like if you're being nice but it's not really you then you're gonna feel resentful or you're gonna feel like uh, you're tolerating something or you're putting up with something at the expense of your own heart or you're doing things that you wouldn't really want to do but you want to be nice so you do them anyway or to be nice is to be helpful even when you have red flags inside saying there's something off in this situation and I need to be cautious but this other personality or this training of, oh, but you have to be nice. It would be rude not to answer their question or it would be rude to not help them. Well, then that, that's a red flag because there is something going on inside of you that's causing you to be nice at the, at the cost of yourself. You're not being nice to yourself by being nice to someone when you know they're either being disrespectful, abusing, or could possibly be a threat, right? So this is something really to be mindful of. And if this doesn't make any sense to you, then this is not for you. But if this is for you, if you're really understanding what I'm saying, then I'm inviting you to take a look at that. What part of you is feeling like she or he has to be nice all the time, and why? And are you willing to actually look at that, first of all? And then are you willing to be nice to yourself? Will you be nice to yourself? Will you be kind to yourself and be authentically you, even if it means not always being nice? And I don't mean go out and be a total jerk to everybody. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is truly, are you hiding behind being nice to fit in, to be liked, to be accepted by a peer group? This usually starts either at school or at home to feel safe, to be accepted, to be validated in some way. But it can really truly cost you if you continue to be nice and you disregard your own intuition about, oh, this person, there's something off here. There's something off. So let me let me tell you about a little story. When I was in, uh, I used to go to SPSCC, that's a community college here in Olympia. And I was coming out of class, I think it was A&P, &A because I was gearing up for nursing school back in the day, about 10 years ago now. And I uh, came out of the parking lot and I was the only one because everybody else had left and I had to go to the bathroom and I stayed behind. You know, and then I was the only one 
coming out of this class because it was a late class. And I noticed that my truck was the my truck and one other vehicle was in the parking lot and that was it. Everybody else had already gone. And I noticed the car, but I go to my truck and I'm I'm tired because at that time I worked night shift at the hospital because I was going towards nursing school, so I worked as a CNA. Uh, anyway, so I sat in my truck and I was like, okay, I'm tired. I'm just kind of like tired from class and gearing up and thinking about what I had to do. And then I just feel somebody looking at me. I feel it. And I turn around and I see this girl staring at me and the back of my hair, the back of my neck hair stood up and I looked and I'm like, what's up with that? And I, she looked at me and I looked at her and I knew something was off. I totally knew something's off here. And then she motions to her friend, another female. And then they come and I'm like, can I help you? Like, you know, do I, do you need anything? Like I'm getting ready to go. But again, I should have just pulled off. I should have just left like, hey, whatever. But I felt that I had to be nice and ask, can I help you? What's going on? And then of course, the other girl comes over and asks me for directions to a pizza place just down the road. And I'm like, uh, it's just down the road on Capitol, just down. And then she's like, oh, can you write that down for me? And a, again, red flag, ding, ding, like, what? It's just down the road, follow, that's one road. But of course, again, I had to be nice. And I re I'm like, oh, okay, and I reach down and I grab a notebook to write it down for her. And then I look up and the other girl, the first one with the, the first one, she had a gun in my face. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Sorry about the word, but I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> I was so pissed. I was tired. I was depleted. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, really? Mind you, this is a community college. Uh, you know, like, we're not parked in front of the Nordstrom's or anything. It, it's like, you're going to rob me at SPSCC? Like, what? But this girl had a, they tried to, long story short, they tried to rob me. They shot me with a, not a real weapon. It was, it was a pellet gun filled with mustard, mustard gas kind of stuff, you know, but I was like so pissed. I was so enraged <laughs> that, and they ran to their car. I started my car and I chased them around the parking lot and I was going to ram right into their car. And then this little voice said, if you kill them, it's going to be on you. And I swerve and I, by then they had gotten in their car and then I chased them through a couple of neighborhoods and then they got away and I just, and I had pepper spray running down my face and I couldn't barely see then. I had to get home before I couldn't see at all. But I was just so infuriated that they would try to rob me at a, you know, two women trying to rob a woman. That's just a crime against humanity in itself, you know? And then I was just furious and I got home and called my daughter like, hey, I need help, I need help, and you know, everything. Everything turned out fine, I'm fine. Those girls never got caught. Uh, not that I know, but I know karma is gonna get them. I just trust that everything happens just as it's supposed to. But uh, talking about full circle about being nice, I knew there was something off. I knew it in my gut. I'm like, there's something off here. The hair on the back of my neck stood up but I had to be nice. I had to be nice. So had I been kinder to me and listened to my intuition, it would have been a totally different ball game. It would have been like, I would have gotten my truck. I would have just drove off like, see ya, peace out. And I wouldn't have ever engaged in them. I wouldn't care if she was standing in the parking lot or not. I just go, I just leave like whatever, you know, but, and that's okay. Knowing what I know now, that would have been totally fine. So I say all this to say, please, if you are hiding, knowingly or unknowingly, if you're hiding behind a mask of being nice and you don't even recognize it, it's like this entrained energy that we, specifically women, we have to be nice. We have to be nice. We have to be liked. We have to be whatever. We have to fit in to our own detriment. To our own detriment, we have to be nice. So are you willing to pull that bullshit off 
and be true to who you are and trust your knowing, trust your gut when something inside of your body says stay away from that person, they're creepy, they got negative intentions, because you know, we know, we have those senses because we're animal beings. Our body always knows what's good and what's not good for us, what's safe and what's not safe, it knows. So had I listened to the hair coming up on the back of my neck, that's it. That's like red flag, get out of there now, something's off. Listen to your intuition, listen to your body. Don't worry so much about if you're nice or not. Because you know what? Those girls, they weren't worried about if they were gonna rob me or not. They didn't care if they were nice. So if you're still stuck in that cycle and that pattern of being nice, I invite you, I invite you to look at that, make peace with that. You don't need to be nice. You need to be kind to yourself and kind to others. But kindness and niceness are two very different things. And let's do a clearing around that. Anywhere where we're stuck in the delusion of us being nice, we're going to keep us safe. Are you willing to uncreate and destroy that now? And anywhere where you're stuck behind that niceness and keeping yourself bound, stuck, doing things for situations, people, places, things like that that are really hurting you because you're being nice, would you be willing to stop doing that now? And would you really be willing to say, I know that you tried to protect me Nice is trying to protect you, but it's not. It may actually be hindering you and getting you in trouble at this point in time. So nice, I love you, thank you for being with me, but I have to let you go. We're not gonna be nice to everybody anymore. We're gonna be kind and we're gonna be authentic and we're gonna listen to our own knowing, our own intuition, and that is being kind to us. So take a deep breath. And if you'd like to explore more of that, I invite you to reach out. But yeah, I'm sending you much love and light. And I, yeah, I hope that this story blessed you in some way. And yes, I'll talk to you next time.